Hello again, everyone. It's favorites time again. So I have eight of my favorite, my recent favorite fountain pens here to test for you all. You'll see some familiar offenders uh, and some familiar inks. So uh, I would say that the majority of these do have favorite inks in them. Uh, this one, uh, the ink in it is not a favorite ink, but it is a favorite ink when in this pen. So, and, and that's how sometimes it works. You know, not all pens are great for all inks, but let's go ahead and dive in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and start writing uh, samples for all of these pens. So let's go ahead and get these off to the side. I am gonna let you look at them now, but I will go through each of them one by one when I'm testing them. So I do have my fountain pen testing notebook here. We're gonna work on the one of the last few pages in my Nemesine notebook here. Let's see, we have, let's get this out of the way. Move that earlier up. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing here. And I will try to remember to move this up as I write. <laughs> I don't always uh, succeed in that, but I will do my best. So the first one that we have here is the Diplomat Arrow Flame. So this is not what I would consider a good everyday writer. And why is that? It's because it's super heavy. <laughs> but when I do write with it, it feels very special. And I love the ink that I've combined with this pen. And it's a very smooth writer. It, uh, it always writes. There's never an issue with skipping or anything like that. So that's why this is one of my current favorites. And it's beautiful. Whenever I get it out, I always appreciate how pretty it really is. So let's go ahead and do a writing sample here. Because this is such a heavy pen, I tend to write with it unposted. The balance is actually very good unposted. You could um, put that on the back. The, there's still a fairly, fairly decent balance, but it is a little bit back heavy. And like I said, because the weight of the pen is so so solid as is, I kind of like to leave it like this. Oh, and I do want to want to say a quick caveat that uh, as per usual, it was hard for me to pick these favorites. And there's probably others that could have made the cut. But as far as uh, when I was looking at my pens and thinking which which pen ink combinations I prefer the most, these were the ones that made the cut. So this is a Diplomat Arrow Flame with a fine nib. It's just a fine stock nib on here. And then the ink that I have in here is Diamine. blood orange, which is a beautiful reddish orange. It uh, has some really nice shading. I'm a sucker for a deep red, red orangish color. So this was kind of right up my alley. And it works perfectly in this pen because it's a very wet ink. And this pen or this nib, the fine nib on here, does tend to be a little stingy. So combining the two, it makes for very nice normally wet writer, I would say. All right, so that's number one. And then number two, uh, so you've seen both this and this on the channel before. This is the Ultem pen by Shown Designs. But what you haven't seen is how I've kind of tricked this pen out. Um, one being I've put this Kaweco clip on here, which actually fits really well. It doesn't move around and uh, it allows me to you know, clip it to things, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> um, but I've also added the Ultem 8 section, which uh, allows me to put this size eight Bach nib in here. So this is a medium Bach nib in 14 karat gold. I got this from fpnibs.com. Uh, and it's my first size eight nib and it's beautiful. Uh, it is rather wet, so sometimes I wonder, you know, should I have gotten uh, fine instead? But it, it writes so beautifully, I, I really cannot complain. So this is the Shown Designs Ultem pen, which basically means it's made out of Ultem material, which is a super hard plastic. And then this has an Ultem 
eight section, which is what this is, oops, section, which you can buy separately. And it seems like they're gonna be uh, another batch of these old Tem pens back in stock soon, I would encourage you to get on the wait list if you're interested in one of these because there there is a wait list and I'm not sure you can get them any other way. Uh, and then this has a Bach 14K medium size eight nib. And it's just beautiful. It's It's a little bit bouncy. I love it. And then this ink will look familiar. It's the Sailor Manyo Yomagi, which seems these days to be one of my all-time favorite inks, which is why I paired it with this special, super special pen. My, uh, my recent acquisition of a uh, grail pen, the Visconti Homo sapiens Dark Age, didn't make the cut just because I have not written with it enough to truly call it a favorite at this point. Uh, but it is a beautiful pen and uh, that might make it into my next time's favorites. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one is this Twisby Vac Iris pen. And it's really, really beautiful. I, uh, I didn't write with this pen a lot for the longest time. And part of it was because I felt like the nib was a little scratchy. So I've since tuned the nib and smoothed it up real nice. So now it's ultra smooth and lovely. It's a medium nib on here. And I love the design on here uh, or the treatment or whatever you want to call it. And I have paired it with what has now been, I would say, probably one of my all-time favorite inks, uh, Waterman's Tender Purple. I put it in so many pens that I can't even keep track of how many pens I have it in. But it works really, really well in this particular pen, and I really like how the purple in the body kind of goes with the purple in this treatment here. So I'm going to leave the cap off for writing with this one. And uh, because this is a vac pen, I have loosened the little end part here, just unscrewed it a little bit. And so this is the Twisby. Now it's lovely and smooth. Vac 700 R Iris with a medium nib. And I wouldn't ever want to change the nib because it has that beautiful color coloration on the end of the nib there. And then this has Waterman tender purple, which is just a perfect shade of purple in my opinion. All right, so going on to the next pen. This is one that uh, I acquired through eBay. This is a Franklin Kristoff Model 02, which I have discovered is my favorite model from them. And I'll tell you why when I go through it a little bit. Uh, so this is the Van Ness Pens exclusive color that was only available through Van Ness Pens for a limited amount of time. I don't know if it were, will ever be available again, which is part of the reason why I paid a premium on eBay when I purchased it. But I'm really glad that I got it because I love the color, first off. This sort of tealy blue color is just so wonderful. But part of the reason why I really like this model is because it posts so deeply and I really do like to post my caps. I mean, a couple of the prior ones I didn't post just because that, you know, that's kind of the nature of them. But this one is always gonna post. It's actually fairly well balanced without the cap if you don't wanna post it, but um, it's, it's really great. It's not too heavy but not too light either. And I really like the grip section. I do tend to hold my pens a little bit further back on the grip. There is a, um, there are threads here for the cap at the end. Some people don't like that with, with these particular models that have the threads on the end, um, but I love this one. So uh, let's see. So this is the Franklin Kristoff Model 02 in the Vaness Vaness exclusive. And this has a 
with a fine cursive italic Nagahara nib. So this is a custom grind that I actually purchased on a different pen and ended up transferring it to this one. It actually wasn't working well, this particular nib on my the other pen that I had it on. It's so interesting to me that how you hold the pen on a particular model can really influence how the pen writes. And this ink might be helping too. This is Diamine Steel Blue, which I actually have not liked in any pen other than this one. So it's just, it's just a good match with this particular pen. And it, the flow is just perfect for this particular nib. All right, and I can't remember if I included this in one of my favorites before, but it's, it's such a great writer and it's so versatile that I had to put it on this list. So this is an Opus 88 Colero model that is uh, in the red color. These are discontinued, but, but I've still seen them in quite a few places. Um, I think it's just a fantastic pen. It, it does have a size five nib, which is a little smaller, certainly smaller than the ones we've seen, which all had uh, sort of the equivalent of a size six nib, except for that giant size eight, um, which is a little smaller, but sometimes it's more comfortable when writing. So um, like I said, I do tend to hold my pens further back, but this grip, no matter what, even if I'm on the threads here is very comfortable. And this, this pen, nib, ink combination is just perfect. So this is the Opus 88 Coloro in red. And this has a, with a medium stub by Masuyama. It was one of the last Masuyama nibs that Franklin Christoph sold. And then the ink in here is Sailor Manyo Ume, which has been my favorite in a lot of pens. I, I have to say that I've, there's a few inks that just really end up being workhorses for me. And I did, because this is a dropper fill pen, it holds a ton of ink in here, but I did end up doing much like I did on the vac fill pen. I had to unscrew the back a little bit to allow ink to flow. I'm gonna close that back up now because we're not gonna be using that again. I'm actually gonna do that the same thing on that vac. And then here, this is a pen that I have not shown on the channel. This is another Bennu pen. Uh, I really like Bennu. They're kind of kind of wacky <laughs> uh, and sparkly. That's kind of their thing. And this was the special edition uh, or one of the special editions that came out recently in a numbered um, series of 150 each. So there was a pink, a blue. Well, actually, I think there's four. I'm sorry. There's a pink, a blue, a green, and a yellow. And each of them had 150 made. This happens to be 90 out of 150. Um, that's kind of nice that they're so limited and this was a spring spring pen so it was kind of specific to the time of year this is called spring bloom this pink color I think the pink color sold out faster than just about anything else pink and then blue and I've still seen some yellow and greens out there and maybe even some blue somewhere but um, I think this was kind of a polarizing pen not everybody liked it but I really like it. I, I feel like on my particular pen, each pen is different. I have a very good combination of pink and white on here where it's not too much of one or the other. There's a good spread of these sparkly bits. Um, I really like it. And of course, I know because it's a Bennu that uses a Schmidt nib, the writing experience is very good on it. I'm gonna move this up a little. So this is the Bennu Euphoria spring bloom bloom color with a medium nib and then the ink i have in here was kind of a surprisingly nice ink it's ackerman's indigo and it's sort of like a grayish blue but i feel like the contrast of the grayish blue with this pink white pen i really really love that 
combo and it flows beautifully out of this pen as well. I would say that this is kind of a wet flowing nib and possibly ink, but it's hard for me to tell because I haven't put this ink in, in any other pen yet. So um, it, it does have quite a nice wet flow in there, but I like a wet flow in a pen. So it's right, it's, it's perfect for me. Okay, and then we have another Kaweco like I had in my last favorites, but this has a different special nib on it. It's not a gold nib, but I'll show you when I open it. I this, So this is the stone washed denim color, and I just love this. I It had been on my wish list for a really long time, and finally the price went down on Amazon, which is kind of where I stock my Kaweco pens. And uh, I went ahead and got it, and when I got it, I realized this is such a beautiful color. I mean, it's supposed to resemble sort of a weathered pair of jeans, but it, I, don't, I don't know about that, but I do think that the color is really, really beautiful. And I put a custom grind nib on it from fpnibs.com. This is a fine Waverly nib, which has a little bit of an upturn at the end. Uh, sometimes, you know, when people see that, they think, oh, that pen's or that nib's been damaged, but no, it is just the shape of the nib. And I'll show you what you can do with it here. So this is the Kaweco Sport. And this Waverly is like so smooth and beautiful. I, I really, really love it. Um, in, uh, uh, oh, this is actually the All Sport in Stonewash Denim. There's also a Stonewash Black, but I, I'm not as big of a fan with of as I am of this one as I am of that one. Does that make sense? I am not a, as big a fan of that one as I am of this one. That that makes more sense. Okay, so this has a fine, I think it's a fine, let me make sure it's not an extra fine. Yeah, so it's fine Waverly nib, which does have that upturn. You can get really smooth writing. And then on the other side, you can get a finer line, which is really nice in it. And it's still really smooth for such an ultra fine, um, let's see, maybe extra, extra fine on reverse. It's, it's really quite nice. I, I love this combo. And then this is an ink you've probably seen from me before. This is Linen Toolbar. Indigo Tegan. which, you know, to a certain extent, I think if I could only put one ink in, in all my pens for the rest of existence, it might be this one because it just it is, it has flowed so well in all of my pens and I really like the dark sort of bluish green t uh, tone of this. Uh, you know, second choice might actually be Manyo Yamagi from Sailor. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty close, but then, you know, thank goodness I don't have to make that choice, right? Okay, and then, as per usual, I have a cheapy Moonman pen at the end of my list here, or at least on my list. So this is essentially, um, and, and I might do a comparison at some point because I do actually have the the pen that this is sort of a knockoff of. So this this is essentially a knockoff of Franklin Christoph's Pocket 66, um, which is sort of like a little bullet shaped pen. Um, and I have both and I might do a comparison video at some point, but uh, I got this one before I got the Franklin Kristoff. The Franklin Kristoff, obviously, you know, great craftsmanship, special nibs, all that. Uh, they both can be dropper filled. I've dropper filled both. Um, this particular one, I, I took off the stock nib. I generally do that on my Moonman pens. I'm not a big fan of the nibs that come with Moonman. I always try them first and then I'm never that impressed. So this is just a uh, Yowo fine nib that I ended up putting on here because it does take a size six nib, which is nice. Um, and it's it just writes so wonderfully. One interesting thing is the ink that I have in here uh, is one that actually has darkened quite a bit since it has been in this pen. So uh, I'll go ahead and do the writing sample and you can see. And this posts very nicely and it's very comfortable. I would say, you know, it's it's at least as comfortable as the Franklin Christoph version. But, you know, this pen is $20 or so on Amazon and other places. And uh, 
the Franklin Kristoff is obviously over $100. So, you know, I mean, depends on how you feel about knockoffs, because this is clearly a knockoff of that pen. So this is the Moon Man. And this particular nib is just so smooth. I think I smoothed this nib, but I can't remember. So this is the C1 model. And it has a fine... Yo, whoa nib and it just glides beautifully I love it um, you probably would not have that same experience with the off-the-shelf nib I, I don't think it was as as smooth as this and then this ink is Robert Oster Lake of Fire which was much lighter when I first it was probably more like this lighter color here um, when I first put it in this pen and it does get a little bit lighter the more you write with it but uh, overall the ink has darkened up quite a bit so it's very interesting and there you go so let me go ahead and bring all this writing up to the camera so you can see the differences here and I think each of these is really beautiful in its own way. And let me go ahead and bring these back out. So I think at some point when I'm doing my favorites, I, I might end up figuring out which pens I never choose. And, you know, sh should I get rid of those um, if there's not just some pens I never choose? Unfortunately, I think the pens that I that I tend to never choose tend to be the least expensive ones. Although there are some really good inexpensive ones like this Moon Man. Um, I would say, you know, cost wise, th these are all pretty reasonable. I think once you add the, um, the size eight nib to the Ultem pen, it starts to get a little bit high. Um, the, uh, if you're not buying it on sale, the Diplomat Flame tends to be on the high end, but all of these others you could get for a pretty reasonable price. And I think it just shows that you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a great pen because I would be happy using any of these pens any day of the week. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll answer when I can. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.